And welcome to Twice Five Miles Radio, fertile ground for conversations worth listening to and remembering. I'm your host, James Nave, always airing first on WPVMLP Asheville, WPVMFM.org, the voice of Asheville heard all over the world, and on other community radio stations like KCEI, Cultural Energy Radio out of Taos, New Mexico. Thank you, Walter Parks, for our theme song, WalterParks.com, for more on Walter's music. Thank you, Devine Dial from Adjean WPVMFM in Asheville, and Robin Collier for managing KCEI Cultural Energy Radio in Taos, New Mexico. You can always reach me, Nave, at jamesnave.com. I would love to hear from you. I'd like to remind you we're sponsored by the Imaginative Storm Writing Project. If you'd like to improve your writing chops, imaginativestorm.com is a great place to start. Today I have my long-term friend, Jennifer Pickering, director of Leaf Global Arts, as my guest. Usually when I do interviews, it's about what's going on in the arts, what's going on in poetry, whatever people are doing. Today I reached out to Jennifer because she lives in Swannanoa, North Carolina. If you've been keeping up with the news, you know that Swannanoa was one of the hardest-hit places in western North Carolina, when the storm blew through 11 days ago, destruction everywhere, the rivers were raging, small streams became raging rivers. Many things happened there that nobody ever, ever, ever expected. And Jennifer was right in the middle of it. Her location, Lake Eden Retreat, has been the place she's lived for her entire life. And she grew up there. She still lives there. She runs a business there. And she's active in the Asheville community, the Black Mountain community, the Swannanoa community, as well as the global community by way of her organization, Leaf Global Arts, which includes many, many, many people. As the director of Leaf Global Arts, Jennifer and her husband, Lee, were preparing to produce the Leaf Festival, which many of you, if you're listening in Asheville, have attended and maybe outside of Asheville as well. The Leaf Festival has been going on for almost 30 years. This is the 29th year. So it's a big momentum. And I was getting ready to go there as well and host the Leaf Poetry Slam, which has been happening every year since Leaf started. Well, the Leaf Festival is canceled. Everything in the Asheville area and the Western North Carolina area was put on hold. All of the counties in Western North Carolina were affected. And again, if you've been listening to the news, you've heard more than one report from Black Mountain, more than one report from Swannanoa. So I thought, since Jennifer's in the middle of it, and since Jennifer and her husband Lee are very active in participating in the community on multiple levels, it would be a good time just to reach out to Jennifer and have her give us a first-hand report of what's going on with her. So when I reached her, she had just arrived back home Turns out she had tripped, hurt her foot, so she was on the couch, still calling in, though, knowing that this radio show will be broadcast in Asheville, and it's also being aired in Taos and online. The folks in Taos have asked me, and that's where I am right now recording this, it's early morning and the sun's coming up here, my mind is on Asheville, that's my hometown, that's my homeland, and so it was very good to talk to Jennifer. I didn't interview her. As I said, she's resting on her couch, holding her computer in her lap. We're doing this on Zoom. And I reached out and said, hi, how are you? And Jennifer started to talk. I asked a few questions along the way, but it's a freeform, impressionistic kind of conversation that we have. She's just reflecting, talking about what comes next. It's a report from the field. She's there right now. This is what's going on in this moment. I recorded this yesterday afternoon, and now I'm editing it this morning. I'm not really editing it. I've just gone through it. I've taken out a few bumps. But mostly, it's what Jennifer had to say sitting there on her couch in the afternoon, just thinking about what she's going to do next, reflecting on the stories that she has to tell, and also recovering from a deeply sprained ankle, as it turns out. So 
We begin by Jennifer just starting out, talking about what happened to her just now as she tripped and fell. So we will begin with Jennifer Pickering speaking to us from her couch. I just got brought back to my house and carried into my house and dropped on my couch. Do you have COVID? <laughs> no, I don't have COVID. I uh, I was trying to be a little do-gooder out in the community and go visit Pisgah. And I, I just tripped over a little lip on concrete and I tore my hammy really bad and oh, no. went down and and as I saw stars just laid in between pallets of distribution stuff while I arrived in pain and now I'm home. I, I haven't tried to walk yet again. So, but yeah, but hey, I'm available oh for a radio interview. Do you have water at your house? Well, we're on well. We're pumping water from our house a couple hours a day by generator. I mean, we're so lucky, you know, having water we can actually get out of our faucet and that's clean. Navi, it's hell here. Like Swananoa, it's disastrous. It's hellacious. I, I haven't seen that much on TV and such, except, except when I left for a few hours. It's like a sci-fi disaster movie. It, it's really, it's, it's hell. Disaster, death, destruction, madness, connection, and then bright spots of beauty. But when you're in the density and the immensity of a disaster, there's so many different things that you realize. One is that you're not seeing the news. So you're not seeing what other people are seeing because you're living it. And as a photographer, I normally am drawn to photograph, especially when it's documentary and something historical. However, I realize like when it's your home, when it's your, you know, your friend's places of business, when it's your friend's homes, you don't have that same desire. You don't want to remember this moment. And the only real piece of sharing these images and sharing the hell is to be able to get support and relief in hopes that each person, each family, each business can bit by bit figure out how to rebuild. And it, it's also very odd because there's pockets, there's pockets of normalcy and there's different layers of intensity. And I had to remind myself, I left for a few hours a couple of days ago to go to my aunt's funeral. And I actually flew out and it was like being in a twilight zone. And I had to remind myself that everyone I'm seeing has had their own personal hurricane. Everyone has. At some level of living and dying and being. So just a reminder in that shared humanity a couple of beautiful things, at least in our area. So we technically are in the county and we have a Swannanoa phone number and a Black Mountain address. So we're we're in the middle of all, all the mix. And the Swannanoa existence is so drastically different than the Black Mountain existence. And the Asheville existence, they're all just very different. And the River Arts, that is a hellacious uh, Mad Max destruction as well. Reminding us again that we've all had our different versions of a hurricane and everybody's got their story or their stories. And most everybody I know in Swannanoa has rescued and been rescued. We have all done it. I thought it was really, you know, really quite, quite interesting the first day when I led a group of the bridal party that was staying out here at Lake Eden and we got access to Grovestone and first we went in four wheel drive and then we took chainsaws and chainsawed all our way and then we crossed rivers and then 
We went through three landslides and rescued the bride and reunited the bride and the groom and her maid of honor with the father of the bride and the and the bride's brother. And a um, leafer who had showed up for the leaf staff meeting the Wednesday before the hurricane. I, I don't recall dates at this moment. Fortunately, he's a chainsaw expert. And so we had this epic, epic journey. And the, one of the, this is just one of those highlight moments, Nave, as we're walking along and with the father of the bride and really stressing the fact that the community where she had chosen to stay Laurel Ridge, it's right up by the reservoir, and the road going there had totally collapsed, and it's part of the immense collapse, and that the only way she was going to be able to get in and out was this hike, and I had done it a couple of months ago with a friend who works uh, at Grovestone, the family that owns it, which, just side note, Grovestone is a hundred-year-old family-run company, and you th- think they haul stone which they do and gravel but right now that stone and gravel is gold absolute gold and they are being extraordinary so going back to the epic bride adventure and rescue so you know we've got the four-wheel drives we've got the chainsaws we've crossed the rivers we've started to see destruction and trees and just madness and the father of the bride looks over and goes, so, well, I guess, you know, there's not going to be a wedding tonight. And, you know, let me share with you what my father-daughter dance was going to be. I'd already given it to the DJ a couple of months ago. I'm like, oh, yeah, what's your father-daughter dance? I'm sure that's going to be sweet. And he goes, huh, it was going to be Fleetwood Mac's song, Landslide. I was like, no. <laughs> your father daughter dance was going to be to landslide and we're literally having to go through three landslides to rescue your daughter the bride right now (laughs) so then fast forward um they get up and get to the bride and she has some lobster rolls apparently they didn't bring any down to us but she had finished those up and i contact one of our neighbors here at Lake Eden, who is Dan Davis, and he's a preacher. I knew he had married people before. And I said, would you be able to do a wedding today or a marriage? Wedding's not happening, but could you do a marriage? And he's like, absolutely. So after all these trials and tribulations, and we've got all their suitcases, and we hike back over the streams and forward through the pieces that we've cut out and get back on the four wheelers and we make it back to Lake Eden at about 415, 45 minutes before their original wedding was scheduled. And Dan's like, I'm ready. And I was like, ride, groom, maid of honor, everybody like we've got, you can literally get married right now at five o'clock at your time. And I was so disappointed. She was like, oh, I think I'm just going to focus on going on my honeymoon right now. Then I'll delay the wedding for a little bit. I was like, (laughs) so the epic bride rescue included the song landslide. And it also included her deciding, you know, she was just going to wait for that magic moment, but she got rescued and reunited with her family. And she just sent us a lovely note thanking her for her bridal rescue in the meantime, several of the party, their cars are still here because there's no roads left where they had parked their cars. But I told them if they would like to sell their nice Subarus, we have plenty of people who have lost a car. I have yet to know anybody in Swananoa who didn't lose at least one vehicle. We've lost at least one. Well, uh, we've lost two, maybe more. So it's quite a thing. It's quite a thing. So a blip from this beautiful place that I've grown up and lived all my life, Swananoa. As I was going around taking pictures of all the trees that we lost and just also being grateful that a lot of them that are leaning on houses, at the same time, we have so many that fell the best direction possible, but 
I was laying in bed during the storm and at some point just closed my eyes, just hoping, hoping, praying it would stop. And I opened my eyes back up and I was like, that's so strange. I, I've never had a mountain view from my bedroom. And it was like, oh, <laughs> just the trees, my tree friends, they have fallen away. So a little bit like all our tree friends that have fallen, all of us here have fallen a little bit too. I'm not sure we'll ever be the same. It is much different to be part of a disaster and be surrounded by so much loss of every level of business, family, and most importantly, humans. And be surrounded by so many heroic and extraordinary coming together stories and so many people who survived, you know, through the waters. Um, our favorite place we love to go, Nave, the bush. Not Mark, who, you know, had his sons there and is such a gathering spot and my favorite restaurant in the world. He said it was just like all of a sudden a tsunami came through and swept he and one of his sons, Troy, into it. And they managed to grab onto the building as they were being swept out into the river and climbing up. And again, all of us have been rescued and all of us have rescued. The stories are immense. Everybody has one. The Paez family who lost their home and survived by breaking into their neighbor's home and barricading the doors as the rivers rose. And then they finally had to swim out or their son Sebastian swam out at miles and miles to get help. And then how many people had to walk for miles and miles to get help? But going back with the Paez family to their beautiful home that they had created, watching an insurance adjuster come and just look at it so quickly and then just so, you know, I just with such matter of fact of like, oh, yeah, you know, your home's, your home's total gone and you might get a little bit of money, but because it's a manufactured home, which it didn't even appear to be one until you look to, to the bottom, they're like, yeah, you you know, you might get 20,000 and you're just like, oh my God. And then she's like, oh yeah. And, and all the trees and everything that have fallen, you'll have to figure out how to clean all that up yourself. And just so you know, once your home does get condemned, the insurance company, they won't haul it away. So you'll have to figure that out. And it's just so many layers. The fact that I'm even sitting here, laying here, talking to you on the radio is a miracle. We had zero communication for the first six days, really zero. And even now the Wi-Fi is spotty and it goes in and out. Sometimes you can do it. Sometimes you can't, but the full breakdown of systems, we have walkie talkies on property. Thank goodness. And then you think about all those other things that you wish you had in your hurricane kit that you just never, never considered how important so the aid is rushing in. A funny thing is, too, that when you're not used to being the person that needs aid and it's a lot easier to give a hot meal or to give something and so you don't really necessarily take things for yourself because the need is just so immense. Uh, connecting people to other people is a huge, huge piece. And that that's what I've really found in my moments and in um, with my leaf community and friend community and just being here is, you know, somebody showed up with anywhere from 100 to 700 water filtration systems today. So taking them to Beloved. And Beloved really is the on the ground response team that is grassroots, it cares, it understands our community and Poncho and uh, Amy they're my personal rock stars in this. And then watching other people, um, Dave from Pisgah, his crew, as they were carrying me out, were just like, Dave uh, has been extraordinary in the distribution and housing and letting, you know, the Cajun Army and other people hold base there. I think for all of us who are in Swannanoa, it's really traumatic. 
and it's deep, it's immense. We hold light. I think about all of our LEAF International communities that we work with, every single one of them from Haiti to St. Vincent and the Grenadines just had a huge hurricane themselves to, mm-hmm. you know, Rwanda through the genocide, through Guatemala. Every single one of them have had extraordinary, immense, horrific disasters that they've survived. And they give me hope right now. I, you know, also look at their examples of what have gotten them through and the culture, the music, the food, the connection is a huge piece of it. Walking through the airport for a moment and watching everybody be on their phones was one of those moments that just made me want to leap back into being at home where we're on the ground and taking care of each other and just pick your family, pick your moment, pick your possibilities and how many neighbors I'm meeting on every day that I just never have known. We were the only people on a well Once we were able to do this crazy reverse generator skit into our well system and house, uh, Lee started pumping it out because it's fresh, clean water and taking it to all the neighbors. The trailer park that's down on Lake Heaton Road, the only reason why they're even still there is that the berm between, and I think that's the right word, uh, it's a huge mound man-made dirt that's been there most of my life that separates Lake Eden Road from Grovestone. And at the entrance to Camp Rockmont, the berm broke about a hundred feet. And the ro- our road that had been turned into a raging river, literally when it broke that berm there, the river then went down into the bottom of Grovestone because it was literally 50 feet from taking out another entire trailer park. One of my friend's moms, and she's part of my Reggiana family, her trailer is the lowest lying there, and her name's Ivy. And I thought for sure she wouldn't have been there and didn't ride out the storm there. And I went down two days later and knocked on her door, and she answered the door. And I was like, what? What in the world? Why are you here? How are you here? And do you know? You are only alive because of this berm break. And she said nobody had checked on her and that she just kept on holding on. So I got her and we got up, you know, came up and on our way up, we stopped at the berm and we both just gave thanks to it for breaking. It literally saved her life and all of her neighbor's lives. So for days, um, You know, we couldn't get out. There were anywhere between, I don't know, maybe 20 to 50 huge old pines down on Lake Eden Road. Thankfully, the school and the prison and the children's home, all of them have been extraordinary. And they opened their gates so that we could do this little zigzag, go around to get out of here. Um, the end of Lake Eden Road was totally disastrously just gone. I felt for sure it would take months and months to repair. They have managed to establish one single lane that will get you in and out there, which is just miraculous. And again, thanks to living right, right next to a growstone quarry. If you ever wanted to live next to a quarry, this is the time to be next to a quarry. It's deep. It's immense. And, you know, they're still finding people's bodies and how many people I know watched trailers and homes and sheds float down the river that had expanded in Swannanoa with people in them just yelling, yelling for help to try to get out of them. And how many two stories I know of people that got what do you want to say, um, isolated on like a rock or a log in the middle of the river. And one was a woman who 
these two young guys who are in high school, Joshua and Sebastian. Sebastian, it's his family that they lost their home. And both these guys have been working at Lake Eden and Leaf for years. They're young, good kids. And just watching this madness. And Joshua kept seeing this one woman and he thought for sure the search and rescue crews would get her and for sure. And every time he came back, she was still there just screaming. And he, he, um, he said, finally, after I think it was eight to 12 hours, he goes, you know what? I was a boy scout. He went up, he got his life vest, he got his ropes and he got his dad's truck and his dad and they went down and they ended up rescuing her off this log that was lodged in between the raging expanded river as she had watched her whole neighborhood and family and friends pass by her and Joshua had watched it and it's immense. It's immense. And then things you don't think about, Sebastian ended up having to go emergency wise to Levine Hospital in Charlotte with E. coli and other bacteria because the waters are so polluted. And I've seen some stuff this week in my own community that I never imagined I would see and never hoped to have seen. Right now, there's you no, know, we're not even considering the immense amount of loss in terms of, you know, business and all those other pieces because right now the focus is our community and we're still in a triage and emergencies of how do we how do we best show up for each other and in our community and there's endless endless ways you know Nave, you grew up on big pine lane right Mm -hmm. i used to love the smell of fresh pine now it's a different, different way to interpret that smell. When a hurricane comes through and walking out, there was just this overwhelming scent of fresh pine, which in one moment was beautiful. And then the other moment was because all the so many pines had fallen. Not only had we lost our friends, the pines, but a lot of them had also done a lot of destruction. Um, And then a lot of them were just lost. So it's just fresh pine has a whole different, whole different feeling to it now. And you think that when the world stops, you'll have those moments to do all those things that you've been wanting to do. But the reality is, is that you're heart and your mind and your nervous system are just swirling. So you're not to that place yet. Getting regrounded is a real is a real journey of its own. Are you feeling any kind of balance after this period of time or are you still in shock or do you feel hopeful? What are some of the emotional tones you have? I know that Leaf is canceled and that seems so in the rearview mirror at the moment because of all the things that you're dealing with. You know, I gave myself a few moments to imagine and recall the magic of how I feel when I'm at Leaf and I'm not, (laughs) I'm not ready to go there yet. I, I, um, it's, that's too big. Um, I'm not ready to go there yet. Uh, and it was a reality we're hoping to do and our team's doing, you know, autumn, they're doing pop-up ex- healing and music in places. Um, and we started an artist relief fund thanks to the Dan Lucas Foundation really being a beautiful catalyst. And that's going to be a long time need for sure. In terms of, you know, the nuts and bolts of having to cancel leaf, it was at at first I, I didn't realize the immensity of what I was surrounded by and experiencing because you can stand in places at Lake Eden where it's just absolutely beautiful. And we are really lucky that our buildings are mostly okay. 
you know, we've got trees and stuff leaning, but the buildings are okay. But the, the roads, we have, we have, um, new roadways, new pathways, new, um, new rock formations. And, you know, the roads are, the roads are, uh, a whole nother chasm in the experience in themselves. But at first I just didn't realize that it seemed like three weeks was such a long time away. So, you know, during, during COVID, we were able to pivot and create a drive through leaf pretty quickly. However, we weren't living amongst and amidst and in the middle of a disaster, a disaster relief and recovery effort. And that is a different, different experience. So I have immense, immense gratitude for the LEAF community that are really understanding and sensing of what we're going through. There's a lot of the LEAF community that are also going through their hellacious hurricane and they're part of this journey as well. We have a lot of LEAFers that are local. So that is that is on so many different levels. And, you know, just the immensity of what you're doing every few minutes and every hour is like a week long. And as my husband Lee put it, 17 of the things that he's having to deal with right now, any one of them before the hurricane would have felt like a lot. Now it's all just a lot, a lot. Um, I feel relieved that I'm able to cry some, you know, I, I, I haven't always had an easy cry, but you know, every time I drive through Swannanoa, it just rushes through me. I have a new appreciation of our community and also this strange political piece is so fantastic that in all of this madness, I have not seen or heard any politics from my end, from my end. And I, I didn't actually ever recognize, especially Swannanoa, being such a diverse both economically, socially, culturally, politically, ethnically, everything. Like diverse is Swannanoa and we're not incorporated. So we fall between a lot of things. But in going door to door through several of the neighborhoods, primarily two different mobile home communities and one right there by the Owen pool lot, which watching from afar search and rescue teams bring out people in just recognizing the immensity and people just sitting on their doorsteps for days, just in shock. So there's this mix of feeling that is very twilight there's sadness there's confusion there's connection there's above all there's love and when you see people that you haven't seen for years how many people that i haven't talked to for years or or, you know we had some strange falling out have reached back out it's just Nothing like a good hurricane to bring people back together. (laughs) Um, It is, it it is a wild, it is a wild, intense journey. The pets have really felt it. Like all three of our pets keep on climbing up on our bed and just like snuggling in with us, being like, we got you, we got you. (laughs) And then there's some, you know, magic and places of humor one of the communities that I had gone up in specifically looking for the Paez family who are now living out here at Lake Eden with us. They're living in one of the rental homes, which, 
you know, is we're so grateful to even be able to have space to serve in this way. And they had other people in their family lose houses, but their mother's home was okay. And, it, you know, it's not a very big trailer. And they had so many family members staying in there. So when I went up there the first day to connect with them and just started meeting their neighbors and providing supplies and seeing what the needs were. And the most unique need was uh, was rabbit food. And at first when um, this family was asking for rabbit food, I'm thinking of like, oh, cute little bunnies. Isn't that cute? And then they were like, oh, no, like they need they need big rabbit food. And I was like, well, I've got a big cucumber. So I was like, let me see your bunnies. Let's take them the big cucumber thinking that, you know, whoa, that's great. I was like, oh, oh, that cucumber is not going to last very long amongst these four big bunnies. So I put it out on social media. And this is where social media is just extraordinary is I got so much rabbit food. They are rabbited. Uh, for, you know, months and months and months and months. So just finding those little small places where you can help and support and with people who may get lost in the cracks, because there's a lot of cracks right now. There's a lot of cracks in our hearts and our pavement and our businesses and our families. Like there, it is, it is crackle, snap, crackle, pop. And then there's those next layers of, you know, driving down into Swannanoa the other night with an electrical fire starting. So it has given me immense appreciation for our friends in Haiti. I was thinking about I've been I've been the phone contact for one of our families that we work with at Leaf International Haiti because they've been, you know, basically sequestered to their houses because the gangs have gotten so bad and just the term political turmoil and I'm giving rah rah coaching on write your poems, do your songs, keep your creativity going. And then when you're in these moments, you're just like, oh <laughs> like it, it is definitely it's hard to stop and it is definitely a challenge to let both your body and your mind stop. However, being reminded that we're not good to other people if we're not okay ourselves. It's been interesting walking into Black Mountain, which again, there's so much loss there as well, so much. But they are an incorporated town. And I've gone to a couple of the town meetings and they have a city council and they're doing great the support and the connection is really beautiful. And so many of the places that are serving food have music on, and it's really, it's really sweet. But it is worlds away from Squananoa. I had somebody today who is carrying me out. And, you know, I just did a silly trip and fall, which was so silly, but so painful and has me down and I had to be carried out. I'm like, dang it. This is, I kept on thinking all week, like don't fall, don't get hurt because there's so many people in need and you just don't want that to be you in some way. So it happened. And so finding myself in that spot has been precarious. However, it's why I was able to comfortably do this Zoom call, but reminding people to take care of themselves, both being in a disaster and supporting in a disaster, have a certain layer of intoxication and a certain layer of, of meaning and purpose. And when you step out of it, it's a lot there to unpack. Say a little more about meaning and purpose. That's really interesting. In a disaster, it also makes you think about what skills do you have that you can bring to the table and how your skills show up. You know, right now I'm surrounded by 
chainsaws in the distance, chainsaws, cranes. Thank God road equipment has showed up because, you know, we almost lost our road for a good period of time. But what is your place where you find home and where you find a home to both take care of yourself, but also to serve and help with others? So it's a lot. It's making me a little dizzy. I might have to stop for a while. <laughs> well, Jennifer, thank you for taking the time to talk about this. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Love you dearly. I love what we've created at LEAF, and I look forward to, um, you know, having those moments where the culture, the music, the arts, where all those pieces um, take us in the next phase. There's going to be so many phases of this and take us in those next phases of us, you know, living, living in and connecting in our best ways. And, you know, Navi, this show is something that you found your purpose and meaning during COVID. And it has been really beautiful. And you're one of my friends who you've had your own personal hurricanes and spend a lot of time in a country, the Philippines, that has suffered immense, immense disasters and in a place in New Mexico that suffers fires. I do have to say that when the insurance adjuster told the family that you would have been better off if you would have had a fire, I was stunned that they even said that. <laughs> and I was also horrified at the same moment. I think they're all just different versions uh, really challenging the humans, the humans resilience and the other pieces, you know, we also have to take a moment and pause and realize, I, I don't know how many days in we are now, 11, maybe, do you know, 11, 12? Something like uh, that, yeah. Okay. So, you know, we think about our friends and relatives and both the Ukraine and in Gaza and Palestine and Lebanon and Israel, I mean, everywhere that is in undergoing immense, immense devastation and civil war. And the resilience of the people who have survived and then the immensity of the loss of what everybody has survived. It's... um it's just immeasurable. And this is something that is really grateful. I'm not sure I I'm not sure I finished this thought a bit ago, but I was referring to the political status because we don't have TV right now and we're not hearing any updates on the election and all of that. And back to this little cove of Swananoa being so incredibly diverse, both or as in all ways that I refer to as economically, socially, culturally, all the pieces. And yet in this time, I have heard nothing, nothing politically and nothing to tear us apart, only things that will bring us together. And that's pretty extraordinary. That may change again fast, but that has been a really beautiful silver lining. And that, my dear, is a great place to close. <laughs> Thank what you. Is, what is the name of your show again? By Five Miles Radio. Yeah. Well, let me tell you right now, the the five miles surrounding me right now are really, really hurting and they're really intense. And they're also really beautiful. So that's a perfect, perfect name for this moment in time. Hey, love you dearly. Love you and relax and be easy and we'll speak soon. And there you go, my friends. That was Jennifer Pickering reflecting on her experiences during the big storm in Asheville and the Western North Carolina region. And as I was listening to Jennifer tell us her story, reflect sitting there on the couch with her foot hurting in the late afternoon with all of the destruction around her, I was listening to what she was telling us. 
with an ear in the direction of poetry. I know Jennifer wasn't thinking of being poetic as she sat on the couch and talked to us, and yet the way she was phrasing things, the way she moved around, the way she allowed herself to not be self-conscious at all, just to drop into the story and let it unfold, seems so poetic to me. And I know that in these kind of hard times, people do turn to poetry. And what I'd like to do is offer you a poem I used to perform quite a bit, and I haven't thought of in years. It's a poem written by Robert Penn Warren, and I love the poem because of the title, Something is Going to Happen. And the poem reminds us, no matter what happens, something else will happen after that. And I think listening to Jennifer tell her story with the optimism she brought to the story, she leaned into her optimistic nature, even though she's surrounded by things to do that overwhelm her, things to do that overwhelm her husband and all the people that circle out from there in the Swannanoa region. And even with all that, you could still hear her optimistic tone, her desire to make things better, her need to pull herself out into the world, take herself out into the world and make something happen worthwhile for the people around her. So this poem, written by Robert Penn Warren, titled Something is Going to Happen, speaks to that sensibility, and it also speaks to the optimism of things. Even if something horrible happens, it's still possible to take a breath and smile. David Lamont, whom you may know if you live in Asheville, just posted on social media a video of a song that he wrote probably two or three days ago and recorded about the situation in Black Mountain and Swannanoa. And in the video, the people who are helping and moving water bottles around, all of the stuff that you do, the fire and rescue folks, the soldiers, everybody throwing in, many of them smiled and waved at the camera. So even in the the depth of the work that's so difficult, it's still possible to keep yourself smiling a little bit. Even in the grief, you can remember what you've lost and imagine what you will gain and how you will rebuild. So here's Robert Penn Warren's poem, Something is Going to Happen. Something is going to happen. I tell you, I know. This morning, I tell you, I saw ice in the bucket. Something is going to happen, and you can't duck it. The way the wind blows is the way the dead leaves go. Something is going to happen. I'm telling you so. Something is going to happen. I declare it. It always happens on days like this, Mother said. No, I didn't make the world or make apples red. But if you are alive, you'll buck up and try to bear it. For this morning, the sun rose in the east. I swear it. Something is going to happen. I swear it will. Men have wept watching water flow, and feet move fastest down the old track they know. Look, look how light is lying across that hill. Something may happen today if you don't sit still. Something is going to happen without a doubt. If you aren't careful, it might happen this very minute. Have you ever looked in a drawer and found nothing in it? Have you ever opened your mouth and tried to shout? But something happened, and the shout would not come out. Something is going to happen, whatever you say, whether you look out the window or walk in the door. Some things will be less, and other things more. It's simply no use to turn your head away, Something is bound to happen on a day like today to change everything any which way. For the sound of your name is only a mouthful of air, and the lost and the found may be found or lost anywhere. Therefore, to prepare you, there's one more thing I must say. Delight may dawn as the day dawned calmly today. And that was Robert Penn Warren's Something is Going to Happen. I've always liked that poem because it's so, so true. Something is happening all the time in the world. And we see some of it. Whatever is happening around us, whatever we participate in, 
We see, we feel, we register, we take in, and we remember it. And I'm grateful that Jennifer, in her story that she told us today, reminds us that delight is always there. I like that poem so much, something is going to happen. Delight may dawn as the day dawned, calmly today. So we come to the end of the show. Thank you ever so much for being with us on Twice Five Miles Radio. I really do appreciate it. We always air first on WPVMLP Asheville 103.7 and stream online WPVMFM.org, the voice of Asheville, heard all over the world and on other community radio stations like KCEI, Cultural Energy Radio out of Taos, New Mexico. Thank you, Walter Parks, for our theme song, WalterParks.com, for more on Walter's music. Devine Dial, thank you for managing WPVMFM in Asheville. Robin Collier for doing the same in Taos, Cultural Energy Radio. You can always reach me, Nave, at jamesnave.com. Nave is spelled N-A-V-E. And I'd like to remind you that we are sponsored by the Imaginative Storm Writing Project. If you'd like to improve your writing chops, imaginativestorm.com is a great place to go and if you're thinking about writing if you'd like to record some of the stories you've experienced especially if you are in Asheville my creative collaborator Allegra Houston and I offer a free imaginative storm writing prompt of the week community gathering every Saturday at noon eastern time and every Thursday at 6 p.m. eastern time so imaginativestorm.com if you'd like to join our community and tell some of your stories and maybe keep them a little bit in the poetic realm. Who knows? Imaginativestorm.com. So to finish us out, I'm going to give you a song I've played before on this show. I absolutely love it. It's my good friend Big John Shares cover version of Nature Boy. He titles it Nature Boy, Nature Girl. So here it is. Big John Share, Nature Boy, Nature Girl. Thanks ever so much for listening. And do come back again sometime very soon. Well, there was a boy A very special kind of boy He wandered very far
they happened to pass my way. We talked of many things, kings and queens. Then they said to me, the greatest thing. to be loved.